It's, it's just very hard to say, okay, we're going to spend $39 million. We're just going to cut the check and spend $39 million on incarcerating young people and not put any money into reentry, prevention, intervention, and alternatives. Will Louisville see the return of the downtown juvenile detention center? House lawmakers in Frankfurt taking up that question today as they voted yes on House Bill number three. The legislation is a plan to pour millions into the former downtown facility once run by the city, now given the seal of approval by the House. Grace McKenna explains why the bill's sponsor says they now need nearly double the cash, more than the original estimate. Representative Kevin Bratcher's juvenile justice bill just cleared another major hurdle. We've got a problem. We've got to solve it. And this is a great first step to solve. This isn't just Louisville. This is statewide. The House signed off on a version of House Bill 3 that nearly doubles the money earmarked to reopen Louisville's downtown detention center. Bratcher said after assessing the building, it became clear they needed more. Well, it's at 17 million now, and I hope that's enough, but I've heard it might be up to 25 million. If it is, we'll have to address it in a future budget year. HB3 also opens juvenile court records for three years in cases of violent felony offenses. The Urban League's Kish Kumi Price spoke out against that proposal. How many of you made bad decisions when you were younger? Decisions that maybe you were held accountable for, some you maybe got away with. Bratcher, though, argues businesses have a right to check backgrounds. Oh, these are violent crimes. These are not petty theft problem. HB3 requires a 48 hour hold before a hearing for violent offenses, allowing for mental and physical evaluations. Lawmakers praised mental health provisions, but some questioned detaining juveniles before court proceedings. There are significant due process concerns with this provision, which again requires the detention of a child who has not yet been convicted of any crime. Bratcher says some see this as a Louisville bill, but points out new funding for staffing, transportation, and upgrading the Linden facility. I think this is a good first step in trying to fix the problem and turn some of these kids' lives around before it's too late. Despite the costs and concerns, the bill moves on, bringing Louisville one step closer to a revived downtown detention center. In Louisville, Grace McKenna, WHAS 11, on your side. The bill now heads to the Kentucky Senate. Lawmakers have until the end of this of March for the short legislative session.